Welcome to my new podcast slash show called Black Count. And basically where we talk about all topics, whether it's about life, just anything life topics. It To me, life topics sums up about everything that you can possibly talk about when it comes to life. And I do want to switch up my YouTube channel to have like a safe creative space where we can just go over all things about life and have an open conversation. And that's more compassion. So yeah, let's get into this topic. So welcome to my show called Black Couch. I am your host, Bianca Free, and I'm excited. So let's dig into these conversations. Let's go. So today we are having our first episode on the black couch. We are getting comfortable. This is how we're going to start off. This is going to be the vibe for every episode. So the first topic will be about how does it feel getting divorced in your 20s and does divorce mean like you're starting over? People may not know this, but I was married at a young age. I was married at 20, and I got divorced when I was 25. And <laughs> um, I don't even know where to begin. Wow. Okay, so being married at a young age is already a challenge in itself because you're still learning about yourself and then turn around getting divorced at a young age i mean a lot of people may say well it's better to get divorced at a young age than get a divorce at an older age and my opinion honestly divorce is not a good thing it doesn't matter what age you get a divorce at that's just how I feel. It doesn't matter what age you get a divorce at and no matter how old or how young you are when you get a divorce, it is like a reset of life. And having a reset in life is not always necessarily a bad thing. It's just when you get a divorce, there's a lot of things that you're going to learn about yourself. You should learn a lot about yourself. After divorce, you should, in my opinion, is do a lot of self-reflecting and figuring out the things that you need in a relationship that you want in a relationship and also doing self-reflecting and figuring out like okay what was your part of the reason why you guys got a divorce doesn't mean like you you are the main cause of the reason why you are divorced but i feel like every relationship you play a part you play a role in so that's how I feel. And dating is definitely a challenge, at least for me, after a divorce. I'm still single. I personally feel like I'll be single for a while. <laughs> by choice, not by nature. By choice because I know that since I've already experienced how a marriage is, I know like how relationships do, can work. Oh, look at Rosie. Rosie's going to join. Do you want to be our first guest on the black couch? <laughs> Rosie's like, yeah, mommy, we're happy. We're happy. Yeah. <laughs> Rosie's so cute. But anyways, back to our conversation on the black couch. But yes, I, I personally feel like dating after divorce is a challenge and it's a challenge because you it's, just, it's a challenge like I, when I talk about these things I get passionate and I get emotional but dating after divorce is a challenge and I don't care like I'm in my last this is my last year is in my 20s and the next year I'll be in my 30s and it is a challenge because you've already experienced of how it is like to be married and to commit your life to that one person forever in your head, like forever, mentally and physically. I'm committing myself to this person forever and for eternity. So when it doesn't happen in that way, you're kind of like, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, 
what is going on so it is yeah it's a challenge and and when you're young like i'm still young i'm in my 20s and you know when you start when you tell people like yeah i've already been married and all this good stuff and you're just like Oh, so it's kind of, for me, I've noticed it's a challenge to date guys that are in my age, like, well, I can't say in, in my age group, because now I'm in my late 20s. Wow. I'm in my late 20s. <laughs> I'm in my late 20s. Wow. Okay. Anyways, it's a challenge to date, period. I think what I'm trying to say after you get a divorce, but... It's a challenge for me to date men who are in their 20s and especially like mid to young 20s because when you like when they find out like, oh, you've been married before, mm, you know, and even it's a challenge to date a guy, even in my age group, like even dating a guy that's in their 30s and if you they find out you've been married before and they've never been married sometimes it's come they come off like well what can i offer you like you've already been through marriage you've already experienced certain things like what else can i offer you and it's like i mean honestly you can offer somebody a lot if you're willing and wanting to be in a relationship with that person so it's a challenge to it's a, it's just a challenge to, to date after you get a divorce. It is, and trust me, your your red flag sensor, I believe it goes off. Like I can sniff red flags a mile away. To tell you the truth, like I can sniff it. So yeah, and you want to you want to make sure that when you move on to your next relationship, you do want to make sure that you are mentally stable to move on to another relationship. And it's not that I'm not saying that because at the end of the day, you don't know when you divorce for a few months and then all of a sudden you meet your soulmate. You don't know when it's going to happen when you meet that right person for you. But just make sure that after you get a divorce. In my opinion, I feel like you definitely need to take that time to do a lot of self-reflection and a lot of healing to make sure that you are mentally stable enough to entertain another relationship. And to tell you truthfully, after I got a divorce, I was not stable <laughs> mentally enough to entertain another relationship. Okay, I'm going to be 100% real about it. I was not uh, I'm slowly getting there. I've been divorced for like two years or roughly around there. I was not immensely stable to entertain no, and nothing. <laughs> like nothing. I'm slowly trying to get there. Because there are some moments where I'm like, oh, okay, I can see myself being like, tr you know, being in a relationship, like a serious relationship. And then there's times where like, no, I'm good. I'm honestly good. Especially when you feel like you have worked so hard to get mentally at peace. And you just don't want nothing messed that up. Like you don't want nobody coming in messing that up. But you shouldn't think like that. So because there is true love out there. Like I tell my friends all the time. Like just because I got a divorce doesn't mean like there's no true love out there. Okay. Sometimes I feel like people have to go through things to learn more or to under. I feel like, oh, let me say that over again. I feel like sometimes I feel like people have to go through things to understand better things. And I am grateful for all the lessons that I have learned while I was married because it gave me a better idea of what the hell I should be focusing on and what I should be looking at. So I have learned a lot and by me being married at a young age and getting divorced at a young age, it has matured me a lot in a lot of ways where I'm able to be like, okay, I could just go do X, Y, and Z and have no problem. Like I can go move across the country by myself and have no problems. I can, you know, I can explore, I can try, I can venture new things out without a problem so i am grateful because i do feel like by me going like being married at a young age and going through a divorce at a young age 
that it has taught me a lot of shit. <laughs> okay, it did. A lot of shit. And I am grateful for those experiences. And if I had to go back, I don't think I would change a thing, to tell you the truth. And I know people are like, what the fuck? Like, you wouldn't change... No, I, I honestly wouldn't. I wouldn't change a thing. Like, if I had to go through that process over again, I wouldn't change a thing. Because, to tell you the truth, I felt, felt like I had to learn certain things to, like... I feel like I had to learn certain things to understand better things. So, I went through what I went through. It is what it is. I was grateful for the experience. And I'm happy. I'm at peace, so. <laughs> but I know, moving forward, there's certain shit I ain't putting up with. So let's just be real about that. There's certain stuff that I know I won't. So, and just like, and going through a divorce should not deteriorate your views about relationships because I see a lot of people going through a lot of stuff. Like my friends, they whether they're entertain well, people I know in general, whether they're entertaining somebody or messing with somebody, whatever. I've heard and seen it all. Like, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it doesn't deteriorate my views about marriage or relationship because the answer is yes. I would like to be married again. So, and I'm not rushing to that because obviously I'm like. I'd rather take my time and I'm at the point where I'd rather take my time for anything because I know like they say better get you know things get better with time so psh, okay <laughs> so I'm not like rushing into a relationship I'm not um it by me getting divorced it did not deteriorate deteriorate my thoughts or views about relationships I still believe that true love out there truly exists I mean, look, I do believe love is real. I don't care, you know, how you hear about so many people. Like, you hear all the time on social media, everywhere, what that people are saying, oh, love is different. Love is not the same, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, I believe in a higher power. And I believe that the higher power gives you the things that you want and need plus more if you ha have faith and you believe. So basically, when it comes down to it, whatever's meant for you is meant for you. And that's what I believe. So if it's meant for me to be in a long-lasting relationship internally forever, it's going to happen regardless. So that's why I am doing all the healing that I need to do now so I can be prepared and ready for the things that comes greater in my life for the future. And who knows? Maybe... Soon I'll be in a relationship. <laughs> you know, you don't know how how quick things can happen. They, like life can happen really fast, and who knows? But I think that's the beauty of life. I think life is beautiful. It just depends on how you view it and what's your viewpoints about life. So that's what I think. <laughs> I am not a relationship expert. Okay, I can just tell you. I'm I give, I'm a type of person I give great advice. I have a lot of insight when it comes to a lot of things because like I said, I've seen it all. I've experienced a lot in my life at a young age and I've seen a lot of shit. So I can give you I feel like I give a lot of great advice to people that I care about. I mean I give great advice in general. I don't I'm not saying like I have to care about you to give great advice because I want everybody to do good. So if you ask me advice, I'll give you advice. I don't think there is a formula of what makes a successful relationship, but I do know what works. And what works is when two help mentally stable people come together and they both want it. If somebody's unstable, mentally unstable in a relationship, or if somebody does not want the relationship as bad, it ain't gonna work. <laughs> And I do feel like people outgrow each other. I do feel like there's I feel like there's a time and season for things. Like this may be your season and the next season is just ain't your season. And so and sometimes you want to switch other seasons. <laughs> 
like instead of having winter, sometimes you want to have summer. Instead of having summer, you want to have fall. But you have to be, when you become an adult, you need to spend a lot of time with yourself and understand like what do you want as an adult and what you like as an adult. There's a lot of adults that don't know what what the hell their favorite color is. They don't know what the hell they like. Like, I'll ask them questions like, oh, what do you like to do for your hobby? You know, like, what are the things that you like? Oh, I don't know. Okay, what are the things you enjoy? I don't know. What attracts you? I'm not sure. Get to know yourself. Please. You Get to know yourself. Because, in my opinion, how do you expect to be with somebody if you don't even know yourself or how do you expect to for people to love you if you don't love yourself like it's a challenge what what do you what how, how do you know what to expect if you don't know it for yourself so that's the point of getting to know yourself so that way you can know it for yourself that's the point of getting to know yourself so you can know it for yourself and I tell people that all the time. Like, how do you know? Like, if, if you don't know what you like, what you want, then why do you expect that for somebody else to know about you? And what? Like, if you don't love yourself, how do you expect somebody else to love you? Like, you're not going to know what you need for that. For that emotion to come through and to accept it. Like, you won't... You don't know what to expect in that if you don't know how what you need, like how to love yourself or so <laughs> I'll be telling people this. <laughs> like, and that's a lot, like that's what I've been focusing on is just, okay, what does Bianca need? You know, for herself. And I be having honest conversations with the man upstairs. I tell you the truth. I, I just keep it real. I be like, look, look, I know you see everything that's going on, but let me tell you, <laughs> let me, like, you know how I am. So, let's not share code anything. I'm not going to pretend because I already know how I am. I know I'm, I'm definitely going to need, like, if I'm in a relationship, I know I'm going to need somebody who's calm, who is not anxious as I am. <laughs> because I know I can be very anxious I'm emotional so I know that about myself I know that I just be like yeah let's go do it and then I need somebody to be like okay well, let's think about this first before we jump to go do something let's strategically plan this so I know that and you gotta be real about yourself like, you have to be real about yourself. You know, like, I need somebody that listens. Because <laughs> I like to express myself a lot. So I need someone that just listens and be like, okay. Oh, so what, why did I upset you again? Oh, okay, okay. You know? So be real about, like, yourself and don't sugarcoat it. And if, I, and if you're honest about the things that you know deep down you need, then I feel like you know how to search better. Like you know what you're searching for. You know what you're looking for. But there are good people out in this world. So don't sit around here and think like, oh my goodness. Like relationship is so artificial. Marriage is so artificial. It doesn't matter. You don't have to believe in marriage. Marriage is not for everybody. That's like going to college is not for everybody working in the medical field is not for everybody you have to figure out what's best for you but don't settle for less and don't degrade yourself and don't downgrade all the time find somebody who balance you out and don't look at the materialistic things all the time because A man, like a woman or a man, they could give you all the money in the world and all the gifts in the world and all these nice things. But if you guys can't hold a deep conversation together, if y'all can't spend time with each other and have intimate, quiet moments together, then ask yourself if that's really healthy. You know, but also be honest of things that you like and what you like to do. So you just got to be real about yourself. Just stay real about everything 
But that comes with getting to know, know yourself first. And to tell you the truth, I didn't know exactly what I wanted in a relationship until after I got a divorce. When I was married, I was still trying to figure out, like, hey, what do I want in a relationship? What are the things that I need to accept and what are the things that I don't need to accept? I didn't know all those things. So, that's why I said I'm grateful for that experience, no matter how it, it had ended up. Because I have learned so much from that relationship. And it also forced me to get to know myself more and better and be honest about just the things that I want in life and the things that I enjoy and the things that I look forward to in life. So, voila. <laughs> but yeah, so, yeah, just, and don't compare don't compare the things that you want in life to other people in relationships because a lot of times as humans especially with social media social media is heavily a part of all of our lives i don't care what anybody says but social media is heavily a part of all of our lives because we'll hear about so many things we'll receive so many information through social media we'll receive news everything so a lot of times with that being said a lot of people compare like oh well they have this relationship they got this going on and they just bought a house and he for valentine's day valentine's day just passed by not too long ago by the way um but like for example for valentine's day i see a lot of people comparing their relationships to what they see on on social media like oh he bought her this and she received this and she's you don't know what they're going through behind the scenes and that could be honestly work for their relationship but doesn't mean it's going to work for y'all for your relationship so scratch that that's like that whole prayer you know like a lot of people say oh i need, i want the same prayer that sierra prayed because she's with russell wilson and it seems like they have like a really great relationship and everything and a lot of people say oh i want the same prayer as sierra did no you need to have what you need to have what she prayed for the things that she needs and want in her life is different for what you want to need in your life it's not the same it's not the same same like no you need to ask for things that works for you and if honestly if you don't know what like if you don't know what actually works for you that's okay because as an adult there's a lot of shit that i don't know to tell you the truth like there's a lot of shit that i'm <laughs> trying to figure out and there's a lot of shit that i just don't understand so that's with every adult like we don't have it all figured out and relationships is a constant learning thing whatever relationship that you get into it's a constant learning curve you're constantly learning and if you're not learning something new in your relationship like if y'all not growing and trying to learn each other isn't like what's the point you you you're always growing as individuals and that's another thing i feel like relationships is two individuals individuals coming together individuals individuals so you at the end of the day you still have to be your own person in a relationship you have to know who you are and you have to understand that well you don't have to like these are all my suggestions my opinions but i feel like you should understand or something to also take in consideration that other people it's not somebody else's responsibility to make you happy you have to find there has to be things that in your life personally makes you happy without somebody else oh it constantly trying to always make you happy that is very like trust me that is something that i had learned when i was in my relationship like trying to constantly make this person happy and pleasing them and that was that took a toll on my mental a lot like trying to make this person smile and trying to make this person happy and then you come to a realization like this person is doesn't want to be happy or this person is not this person just not 
trying to this person not trying to be happy so no matter what you do or oh, i'm gonna do this i'm gonna cook dinner and i'm gonna do, i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that all the time this person still not because this person just not this person got some inner healing work that they need to do for themselves so yes it's a relationship is a lot but it's something that you have to keep working on together and also independently and it's something that you always have to work on yourself because no one is perfect so there's inner work that you have to do as well that's why i'm i'm a firm believer in therapy i mean i know therapy is one of well I, i'm gonna scratch that because i was about to say i know therapy is one of those things that a lot of people don't believe but i'm realizing a lot of people nowadays are believing in therapy i hear a lot of people like oh i'm gonna go to therapy i'm an advocate for therapy okay my best friend is a therapist like <laughs> I am a advocate when it comes to therapy. I think therapy is amazing. And you don't have to go to, like in my opinion, therapy does help a lot in relationships and not just like romantic, just overall friendships, platonic, whatever. I think therapy works because you're finding things about yourself, you're healing things. You know, you're you're striving to becoming the best version of yourself. So when two people are doing that and they come together, I think that that is just amazing in my opinion. So, look, everybody has their opinions about relationships. You honestly have to do what's best for you. And my thing is, it's okay to say that you're not ready. Like a lot of people would say, oh, if you're together, if you're with somebody for a while, y'all need to get married. Like, what if that's not for you guys? What if you guys don't want to get married? What if you guys just want to be life partners? What if, what if just being boyfriend girlfriend works for you guys? Like, do what's best that works for your relationship. Okay, just do what's best would work for your relationship. As long as it's in a healthy way. If it's toxic. I mean, deep down, you know what toxic is. If it's toxic and it's unhealthy, obviously, it's not working. But if it's a healthy, thriving, and it's working, then do what's best. That means it's working for y'all. Everybody needs and wants is different, okay? And some, some people just need to be honest about themselves. You can like the ideal of something, but it doesn't mean you want it. Like, some people like the ideal of love, but doesn't necessarily want a relationship or a, a commitment. Or some people like being with somebody forever, like living in a house with them and stuff, but don't want that marriage. Don't want marriage. Like, just do what's best for you. So, that is my opinion. I'm glad that I'm starting this black couch talk show. I'm so happy. There's more topics to come and stay tuned. Love you guys. Bye.